Hello everyone, my name is Carl Martin Rosenberg. I'm a PhD student at Simla Research Laboratory and the University of Oslo in Oslo, Norway. And today I want to present my paper Spectrum-Based Log Diagnosis that I co-wrote with my supervisor Leon Munen. Now, I I, uh, there is construction work uh, going on uh, in the area near my apartment. So if there are occasional uh, construction work like noises, I apologize in advance, but please bear with me. So the context for our work is the growing influence of continuous engineering practices. Now, if you're not familiar with continuous engineering practices, like continuous integration and continuous deployment, these are basically practices that systematize and automate a lot of processes that used to be manual and very error prone. So back in the day, uh, when developers collaborated on a project, they would typically sit and work on their uh, 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 on different features of the product uh, by themselves. And then, as the release date approached, it, uh, 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 as the release date uh, approached its due, they would manually merge their uh, and integrate their uh, code together and pray that everything worked. Now, on the other other hand. Uh, it is much more common that all the developers check in their code into a version control system like Git and that this uh, version control system in turn triggers some uh, automate, automated build process, uh, processes that check that the code uh, still works as uh, expected and you can build the product as expected and so on. And, and importantly, uh, that you can run a set of automated tests in conjunction with pushing new code. And so this has gained a lot of prominence and it's generally leading to better code quality. However, as an organization, when you gradually start to get more mature in your usage of continuous engineering, there are a new set of challenges that evolve. So let me introduce you to our industrial collaborator, Cisco Systems Norway. Cisco Systems Norway develop uh, video conferencing systems. And as you can imagine, developing video conferencing systems is not easy. It contains networking, it contains uh, photo technology, compression, hardware innovations, and so on. And uh, so what Cisco, uh, what they do is that they have a very, very rigorous continuous integration process that ensures that, every, that all their products work flawlessly before, before they're released to the customer. They run on the order of 15 to 20,000 tests every day, and these are full-on integration tests that are run on actual hardware. And since these products are basically small computers, you can imagine that uh, there is a lot of things that can go wrong in such a test. And, and when you're running the tests on actual hardware, you're actually testing much more than just uh, does it fail or does it pass. And when an error occurs, the only real way to get to the bottom of the error is to look at the logs that the, that the video conferencing products generated. And this is where we come in. So the problem we're trying to solve looks something like this. So you have some kind of log. This is a very contrived example uh, to just uh, give you a, a compre uh, uh, an understandable uh, <laughs> segment. But uh, you, we basically want to help Cisco take something like this and feed it to some kind of solution that leverages logs that are stored from earlier test runs, and then be able to highlight that this is actually the part of the log that is likely relevant for you if you're trying to diagnose an error. And so how do we do this? We call our approach spectrum-based log diagnosis. And it's really a system that works in a couple of phases, and I'll take you, I'll take you through these phases to you so you get a feel of how it works. So the first thing we need to do is to represent the logs in a manner that is amenable to the type of analysis we want to do. And so the first thing we do then is what we call an abstraction step. So here you can see a segment from a, a Cisco log. And we are, the first thing we do is that we translate this to a more generic format where things like timestamps and device information and so on has been abstracted away. Uh, if you don't do this, then you'll have a ton of uh, uh, misleading entropy in your data set and then the analysis becomes very, very hard to do. And then 
what, after the logs have been abstracted in this way, we chunk each uh, or we separate each event into uh, you know, each log into dis discrete events so that each log gets represented as a string of event codes from an alphabet of unique events in the data set. And then in the next step, we use these events and we, cut and we analyze them across the data set. We look at how many times this given, does a given event occur only in failing logs or occur in failing logs? How many times does it, occur, does it not occur in failing logs? And the same for passing logs. And using these four metrics, we compute interestingness measures. This is very similar in spirit to what happens in spectrum-based fault localization, and which is the inspiration for this work, really. And then, once each unique event in the dataset has a, an interestingness score, we can then analyze the target log. So in the final step, we take the target log, we find the unique events that occur in it, and we, we, we query those scores, and we cluster the events based on their interestingness score, and return the cluster with the, with the highest um, uh, summed uh, interestingness to the end user. Uh, we, for the clustering step, we use hierarchical agglomerative clustering with complete linkage, and uh, we keep merging clusters uh, until the, we reach the standard deviation of the obtained uh, event scores in the log. You can read more about this in the paper. <laughs> uh, and so, to evaluate our tool, we asked the following three questions. First, we asked, does it work? Right? Uh, does it reduce the effort needed to identify all the known to be relevant events? Then we asked, uh, how much data do we need before we can run our analysis? Is there some, some kind of diminishing returns effect? Uh, how much do you really need to get going? And so on. That was the sort of the problem we were interested in solving. And then, of course, you could ask, well, if I was tasked with analyzing such a problem, I would probably start with a very simple tool like grep and just search for, you know, uh, strings like error, fault, and fail. And we wanted to see how our technique fared uh, compared to a much more direct approach using something like grep. So, in order to then evaluate our tool, we've used a data set from our partner, partner Cisco Systems Norway. It consists of 45 different end-to-end -end integration tests. Uh, and they span a time period of typically around a month, but the largest data set spans 112 days. Uh, and of course, a very salient question for all statistics and, uh, and the machine learning is how the ground truth was derived. And in our case, it was a bit nuanced. So to start off, all the failing logs are known to exhibit systems of a known error. And Cisco has provided us a set of regular expressions that find sufficient evidence for the symptom, which sounds great. And it is, but there are some caveats. So first of all, there is no guarantee of uniqueness. And what we mean with this is that the proof that Cisco has shown us is not, uh, there's no guarantee that that is the only way to find symptoms of the failure in question. Furthermore, there is no guarantee that by picking out, by using the regular expressions to pick out the events, that you'll have the complete set of all events that an, that an end user would find relevant uh, for analysis. So this affects our quality measures in some way. So, so when benchmarking this tool, we use the following two quality measures. We use recall, uh, which is simply the proportion of relevant events retrieved, where in this case, relevant is the events we know from our regular expressions to be relevant. But we, like I said, we can't guarantee that that, that is the unique or and complete set of relevant events. Furthermore, we use effort reduction uh, and we measure this by basically uh, uh, using a measure that is such that the fewer events relative to the number of events in the log that are retrieved to the end user, the higher the effort reduction, which should make intuitive sense. And now, of course, the choice of interesting mess measure is always important, and we account for that by uh, reporting the median score obtained when trying all of the interest interestingness measures. There is, in general, no globally optimal interestingness measure, and that's what we're trying to account for. 
So what are the results? So for so does it work? Yes, it obtains near perfect recall and a high effort reduction overall. There are some outliers, and we should discuss these in more detail in the paper. And then how much data is needed? So for effort reduction, we see that more data is generally better, but there seems to be a diminishing returns effect once you get sufficient data. Furthermore, it always, it's always more beneficial to add more uh, passing logs, and it's beneficial to add failing logs so long as you have a proportional amount of passing logs to go along with it. If we recall, uh, we see that we obtain pretty much perfect score over, overall, overall, except for one test that we spent quite a lot of time on in the paper. And you can see uh, which, uh, so read the paper for more, uh, for the full story there. Um, and then, is it better than good old grep? So the grep expression we tried is basically the case insensitive regular expression, error, fault, and failure. And we didn't really find any big difference so long as SBLD had sufficient evidence. Now, on the plus side, this shows that SBLD can perform very well without understanding anything about the semantics of the events. Uh, and then the fact that grep works so well could point to a certain data set selection effect where Cisco has given us a data set of failures that they already uh, have a good understanding for and good logging for. But it could also just suggest that in many cases, using the simple and classic approaches still work well. Uh, now we're currently working on evaluating our tool on the log chunks data set, a data set that was pr published by Brandt et al. for the MSR conference this year. And we're working on giving SBLD anomaly detection capabilities. And with that, I would like to say thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of